Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 216. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have a team dig from Christopher Groff and Anonymous Freak. DOS games backslash sports backslash fish bite. I mean, it's clearly going to be something fishing related, right? Um, <laughs> the executable is FB and guarantee you it has nothing to do with Facebook. Um, I guess read me, or not read, what am I doing? Edit readme.fb. There we go. Fish Bite, the Saltwater Fishing Logbook, copyright 91, EGM Computer Consulting. And apparently this is a program that they want $30 for, $29.95, and also New York sales tax if you happen to be there. And apparently this program was made by a Rick Mazbust? Mazbust? I guess that's how it's for. Again, I am bad at pronouncing things. But anyways, I got a feeling this is not really much of a game, just like a logging program. Yeah, so we've got a bit of a menu going here. I got a help fight feature. Whoop. Select option using arrow keys and press enter. Okay, well, that's what all the help is about right now. Um, so yeah, apparently we can do fishing logs, lore and logs, which I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think just just judging by what it says in here, I'm guessing it's like some kind of like navigational log or something. Um, you can do moon phases, check personal bests and stuff. So like, I mean, if we wanted to like add an entry here, so I guess that's our date. <laughs> it's pulling the current date, surprisingly. Um, time from. I don't know, let's say 6 in the morning to 9.15. Species. <laughs> this is supposed to be like a two-letter code or something. Oh, I pushed F1 to, for help, and it actually brought up, like, a whole list of fish here. Um, what kind of fish did we catch? I'm going to say, let's just go, let's just go with something, um... Or, hang on. <laughs> I was about to say, let's just go with something familiar, like a black bass, because that's there's a lot of fishing games based on black bass fishing, but I don't see black bass anywhere in the fish list here. <sighs> hmm. Unless we could just put it in. Like, if we just decided BB is black bass, it won't accept it. <laughs> Okay, I'll pick something different. But you know what? My favorite find, kind of fish to actually eat is cod. So we'll do cod. Um, location, uh, somewhere. Tide from, oh geez, I don't know. <laughs> uh, ten, uh, one F to three must be, f oh, that's why I was accepting it. Well, at least you can put it, push the F1 key at any time and it tells you exactly how to put the information in. So F for a flood tide or E for an ebb tide. So 3E, air temperature, let's we'll say it's 10, water temp, we'll say 6, winter, <laughs> north at 10, 19, oh, I meant to put in 10, 19, method, um, I don't know. Oh, this can be anything. Um, we'll just call it rainbow bait. <laughs> Cause why not? Number caught, I caught two. Largest was, we'll say 16 pounds. Although I don't think they get that big. Uh, oh, and one ounce. And it says we're added. Okay. And then it also resets it so that we can put in more stuff again. So now if we hit escape to exit, we go to. Species browse. So if I put in the cod species, then oh, <laughs> apparently it has sound effects for if you um try to scroll invalidly. So this actually like lets us edit it or something. Okay, we can also like type in notes for each entry that we perform as well. Interesting. 
So yeah, I'm not really the kind of person to comment on a program like this because I don't generally fish. Like I've tried it a couple times in the past and did not enjoy it. Not to mention I didn't catch anything. But um, yeah, if this seems like it would be a program that would be useful for fishing, like for anybody, for anybody watching who does actually go out and fish, like would a program like this be useful to you? And if it is, would be something useful to you, would it be worth $30 is the next question. Like, I mean, it's one thing to keep a log. Like, anybody with a with a book or just sheets of paper can keep a log of stuff. But then the question is, do you want to be able to access that information in complex ways? Like, do you want to be able to look up, like, specific locations that you were fishing at and categorize everything in that manner like that's where a program like this that's where the power of a program like this comes into play is when you want to have that kind of ability to sort through your information otherwise you might as well just have a book or a stack of paper next up michael madsen has dug up win games backslash arcade 2 backslash patamon not sure why, but I think this might actually be some kind of arcade game port. Or maybe not. Um, got a padu3 underscore 11 executable and an executable uh, text file. <laughs> um, Patamon version 3.11. Preface. Patamon is a brilliant Pac-Man-like graphical action game for Windows. You need at least a, a at least AT286 or better and a display with resolution 640 by 480 VGA or better. Some applications running in the background might mode may slow down the pa Pataman. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. What? It says right here as one of the version differences, the intelligence of the monsters has once again been improved. They now have an IQ of 76, beating most politicians. Okay. Okay, now it looks like the registration fee for this game is $10. Except it says here that registered users of earlier versions need to pay $2 to get the updated version. So paying for updates usually only works when you're talking about really high-end software. When you're talking about games, <laughs> nobody wants to pay for a version update. Oh, and it looks like this is another game programmed in Finland. Seem to see a lot of those. But the rules. You are Potamon, yellow guy, and duty is to collect all the pills in the labyrinth. <laughs> Not labyrinth, the labyrinth. There's a definite difference, maybe. When you have eaten all the pills, you will enter another level and slightly different labyrinth. Potamon adjusts the speed automatically. You can change the default speed and the sound setting from the control dialog. So yeah, this really looks like it's just going to be a Pac-Man clone. So let's see what we got. Um, okay, that was weird, though. Cursor actually locked in place for a second. Oh, bring it back. Okay, so it seems to have almost kind of a really dark look to it, or something. Um, there's no menu though. How do we actually. Oh, spacebar. Okay, this goes um, really fast. <laughs> Let me see if I can slow this down a bit. Okay, I slowed it down a bit, so I think it, we might be okay now. So yeah, this is this is definitely a Pac-Man clone, but wow, are these graphics very dismal looking? I mean, that's obviously the what they were going for, but still, it's like actually kind of scary. Oops, and I kind of died. Okay then. So spacebar starts the game. See, I think it is going a little too fast. It's actually kind of hard to tell, like, what speed it's supposed to be going at, but... Whoops. Yeah, it's all... Ah, darn it. I was, like, right next to that thing, too. Okay, let's see if we can actually get to a later level. See if they're... Oh, not happening this time. <laughs> Okay, well, I beat that level, but the layout is still the Whoa, they got a lot faster for this level. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that the AI is relentless. When, you're, when you don't aren't powered up, 
So apparently once you've actually cleared the second level, you have to insert the registration code, which I'm going to guess if I just put in random stuff, it was wrong, please register. And wait, why is it asking for my last name? Oh, because it's going to bring up like a registration form, first initial, I don't care. Name of your city, it's that. Name of your country, that. And now it just continues. Wait, what? Um, it wanted me to register, but it let me keep playing anyways? And it actually did proceed into a new level layout, so like, it wasn't super different, but... Anyways, that was Patamon, which was apparently a Pac-Man clone, but doesn't say that anymore because now it says it was wrong, please register, so that's the new name of the game. But yeah, it's kind of a creepy looking Pac-Man clone with some brutal AI that just goes right for you if you're not like, yeah, like that. But yeah, I've definitely played War... I've definitely played worse Pac-Man clones of this, but this is definitely one of the harder ones I've played that actually plays, like, properly. So, w is it worth $10? Uh, I guess if you want a super hard Windows 3.1 Pac-Man clone, then, well, here you go. And lastly, Cattell's dug up win games backslash new win2 backslash cookie. I've got a funny feeling this is just going to be like some kind of desktop icon thing, but maybe it'll be more than that. Maybe. Not impossible. Although this is only 37.2 kilobytes, so I got my doubts. So cookie.txt. Cookie for Windows 3. This release of Cookie has been designed for Windows 3. It now has a color icon. More reliable resizing. <laughs> Uh-oh. Timer's been added that updates the cookie approximately every minute. It's only operational, providing there are less than 16 other timers in operation at the... The what? The same time. Well, whatever this program is, it's apparently made by an Andrew Kiefer Jackson. And he says five... British... <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting way of doing pounds. <laughs> when you don't have an actual pound symbol to work with. And holy jeez, an email address? That doesn't happen often. But yeah, I got a funny feeling this isn't going to do much. So, let's see what we have here. So, it says, Cookie, rules of the game. Murphy's seventh law, left to themselves, things tend to go from bad to worse. Okay. Oh. Okay, then. So this is literally just a program to recite various quotes. Is that right? All it does is recite quotes. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so I'm clicking the cookie button multiple times here, and you're noticing that it's not updating every time. So I can tell that the way this is working is it's using its in that timer that it mentioned to decide when to update the random the randomization to pull up the next thing that or it's just going through them in sequence in whatever data file it's accessing but yeah this is not exactly much of a program like we do have an about thing here and it's got um <laughs> that looks more like a ruby ring than a cookie <laughs> but apparently this was made in 1991 but yeah, this is just basically, basically just shows quotes, so yeah, that's not much of a dig, so, oh, and it's already looping again. <laughs> well, I guess that didn't last long. Anyways, I'll get, Cattell's gonna get another dig. Let's try that again. And lastly, Cattell has dug up win games backslash strategy backslash amnesia. Okay, this was in the strategy folder, so I will be very surprised, surprised if this is not like a proper game or anything. But, um, I've got an executable, total of 272 kilobytes here, config, help, um, file id.diz, 
Amnesia, a challenging game which requires excellent memory and a bit of luck. Initially, it has a board completely filled with pairs of flag pieces upside down. Your objective is to locate the matching pairs, turning face up two pieces at a time. The game may be played by one or two per- This is a very long file ID dot this. What the heck? Yeah, this is like... Well, yeah, it... it... It is a long file ID dot diz, but I have seen slightly longer than this even though, so not the worst offender. I am having to cut up my recording here through a lot of sirens, so hopefully none of that's coming through. But anyways, here's the game itself. Um, well, that's interesting. It auto maximized, does not have a restore button, but doesn't require the whole 800 by 600 area. It's only taking up a 640 by 480 area. So that's kind of weird. Oh, whatever. Um, what's the help say? So, playing the game. In the beginning, the game is ready to be played. Whenever you want to start a new game, choose new from the game menu. Board will appear with all the flag pieces upside down. Click one piece and then another to turn them face up. Try to keep in mind their locations, click again anywhere to close the pieces, repeat this operation until the end of the... This is just a memory matching game. Yeah, you know what, with a title like Amnesia, I guess that kind of makes sense. So we got a little viewer here so we can see all the different flags in the program, and that is a lot of flags. <laughs> wow. Um, also, this would get really confusing, because <laughs> Ireland and the Ivory Coast are virtually the same flag, just inverted. <laughs> yeah, this game has a lot of different flags in it. Like, a lot of different flags. So, that's actually kind of impressive. Um, we can set the background, make a diagonal, dots, blue, green. So these seem to be a bunch of different patterns we can choose from. Yeah, I can go with the blue. Um, options. Oh, uh, I see where they get you. So you have to register if you want more than the mini size board. That makes sense. Um, it also can beep at us. There's no two player mode. You have to register for the two player mode apparently. So, okay, so that makes sense then. So you're demoing the game in the one player mode just to see how it is. Um, what the, was the registration fee again? $25. Dollars. $25 for a memory matching game. Now, admittedly, the person here who made this, Oscar.netto, not quite sure if that's how you pronounce his name, but apparently in Brazil. So, a Brazilian piece of software, that doesn't come up often. But again, $25 for a memory matching game. Now, admittedly, admittedly, a lot of flags in here. Now, he could have just pulled this from some kind of archive or something, but if he handmade all of these, then that would be impressive. <laughs> but anyways, let's actually play it. <laughs> so, oh, apparently we get time bonuses. Well, I guess if we were to actually, like, <laughs> properly get it or something. I do like that it shows what the flag names are when you click on them, just to make it clearer for the ones that are a little tricky to tell the difference between. Okay, now I know where that one is. Ireland is right there. And apparently we get an 83% time bonus on that. I'm not entirely certain how it's going to be keeping score with this, but I guess we'll find out. Oh, that's tricky. Apparently the Liberian flag has is very similar to the US flag. Well, it doesn't matter in this case because they were both the Liberian flag, but still. Okay, almost done here. And done. Okay, so I guess I had a final score of 349,271. And that was after 56 attempts to ma make matches. Now, I don't know what it means by void here. I'm not sure. But in any case, uh, type in your name. Of course, I'm going to have the top spot because I just first time playing it. Well, I guess it might not have been the top spot if somebody else had played this before loading it onto the shareware CD. But yeah, that was Amnesia. Um, 
a very expensive but very intriguing matching game because of the fact that it has flags as its main matching component and because it has so many flags in the program. So is that worth $25 is the big question. Oh, you know, it would help if I knew what year this came out. Okay, so this is apparently 92. So $25 for a matching game, for a memory matching game in 1992. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the game is definitely worth money if this is some, the kind of thing you like and you want to have like the two player mode and everything. But $25 is a bit of a stretch. This is something that would be worth more so in the $15 to $20 range. But, you know, it's like I'm only putting it that high because of the fact that it has this emphasis on the flags here i think if you had a little more to it than just the memory matching then maybe it would be worth the 25 mark but yeah as it currently stands it's not worth that much but it's close